Amen and amen. Truly, this has been a blessed, blessed Resurrection Sunday. I thank God for the praise team and I bless God for them and I pray that they will have a wonderful, wonderful Resurrection Sunday meal and fellowship with families. Beautiful and to know that we can have that kind of voices with just three of them. That was just three people. Mm -hmm. Plus our gifted musician, Brother James Earls, and he accompanied them. And gosh, that was amazing. And Brother Shelby on the drums. And we are just so grateful that we were able to connect just so that we can give you the type of worship experience that Resurrection Sunday deserves. Amen. It should be better. It should be bigger. It should be more wonderful and celebratory because this is Resurrection Sunday. Do you understand what I'm saying? Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. And I bless God for the opportunity to be in the service one more time. Amen, amen, amen. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this pilgrim journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is Luke the 24th chapter beginning at the first verse and I'll be reading through the eighth and I believe I'm in the King James version but whatever version you have is wonderful it's wonderful whatever version you have is wonderful I'm reading Luke the 24th chapter verses 1 through 8 and it reads now upon the first day of the week very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Verse 8 says, and they remembered his words. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we adore you. We praise your holy and righteous name. We're asking now for preaching power. We're asking for clarity of thought and clarity of speech that your people might hear a word on today that would cause them to be changed. Uh, we pray in advance, oh God, thanking you for how you're gonna make this word real to us, that we might be able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, telling people the good news of our Savior. Now I pray that you would change heart and hearts to hearts of flesh, enabling these seeds to go forward to find good ground, that in the time of your choosing, it would grow to be what you would have it to be. And now in preparation of me, I simply ask that you would allow my eyes to be your eyes, my ears to be your ears, and my mouth so much so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart found to be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you and you alone are my strength and my redeemer. Let the people of God who love God say amen. Say amen again and one more time for the precious Holy Ghost. I want to reason with you this morning from the thought that you looking in the wrong place. You're looking in the wrong place. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I just want to bring you back from uh, the beginning of this Passion Week to this very day. Uh, just last Sunday, we recognized Palm Sunday. We recognized that 
Jesus was entering Jerusalem on his triumphant entry. And he was becoming now the Messiah in the eyes of the people. And he came in in a peaceful way on a donkey and a colt. And, and isn't it good to know that even how he came in, he's still back, even though there were so many things that occurred to Jesus during the week. Uh, he had to go into the temple and tell them, this is not uh, what you're making. This is not a den of thieves, but this is a house of bread. And you're not gonna treat that house this way. And he went right back up to teaching. And, he, he told a fig tree, he told a fig tree that, that, that you can't live any longer because you possess so much life and yet you aren't giving what you ought to be able to give. Some people ought to, somebody ought to be able to be uh, 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 receiving of that because God has called you to do a certain thing and be a certain place. And, and, and for whatever reason, you haven't lived up to what God has put in you. And I pray that you would consider that on today, that you would change and become greater because God has said that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We went on through this week and 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 our jesus uh -huh, was sold out uh -huh. he was sold out for 30 pieces of silver by judas uh, but that didn't stop him because he had a purpose and he had a plan and and i'm so glad that people can still fulfill purposes and plans even though there's setbacks and setups there are sometimes some things in your life that are going to happen that if you're still focused regardless of how it looks it doesn't have to remain that way uh, somebody knows that people will put you down. They will scandalize your name. They'll talk behind your back. They'll try to uh, sabotage your ministry. They'll try to do this and try to do that. But if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he'll meet you at your point of need. He'll help you where you thought he would never be. He will pick you up. And when you are wondering how you're making it, you look down and you only see one set of footprints. And that's because he's carrying you. Anybody glad that there have been times in your life that the Lord has had to carry you because we couldn't make it on our own? That's my walk with me. When I say walk with me, it's because there are times when it can become so burdensome. It can be so heavy on your heart and on your shoulder that you know that you can't do it by yourself. But at the name of Jesus, I can make sure that I know who to call when I need somebody to call on. He said he is an ever present help in our times of trouble. I don't know about you, but we're living in trouble in terrible times. So it's good to know that Jesus is Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. This is Resurrection Sunday, and he got up with all power in his hand. But before that, he, he had to have a Lord's Supper, a Last Supper with his disciples. And he explained to them that you're taking this bread and you're taking this cup of the New Testament, which is my blood, which is shed for you. And he did all of these things to get them prepared, to get them acclimated to a friend was about to leave them, a, a, a Messiah was about to leave them. And, and they didn't really get the understanding because even Thomas, even though we talk about the doubting Thomas, Thomas was a strong soldier for the Lord because he said, I'll go with you back to Jerusalem. Even though it looks like you might get killed, I'll go back with you. Even Peter was a ride or die until it hit them in their faces. And they had to turn away because it's real uh, when it hits you right in your face. It's easy to talk about how somebody else can suffer, how somebody else can go through. But when it's you, it's a, it's a whole different perspective that you have to take. Do I have a witness in here? Somebody knows that, hey, when, when it was somebody else, I could see how it was burdening them. But now that it's me, all across the world, people are suffering from this virus. And you can't look across the street and look down the way and just see that it's somebody else. Because at any given moment, it could be you. You got to be ready. Hallelujah. When when something comes to shake up your life, you got to know a name and that name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. You got to know a name to call on. But so many people are looking in the wrong places. They're looking in the wrong place for hope. They're looking in the wrong places for help. Uh, but we're going to make sure that you know a name this day that is above every name. Uh, uh, there's nothing more powerful than Jesus. There's nothing more powerful than, than Emmanuel, the anointed one, Jesus. There's nothing more powerful than he being the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And then on Friday, he was, he was put to death. He was crucified. And isn't that something? Beginning of the week, hallelujah. Hosanna. The end of the week, crucify him. So much so that they would let a thief, a robber, a murderer, a Barabbas go free 
just so that they could stop the ministry of Jesus Christ. But, but when a seed dies, it multiplies. It becomes so much more. I wish I had two or three people that would go ahead and testify to the fact that, that when he died, he died for you. So when his mouth got closed, uh, so to speak, uh, you opened up yours. I know I'm a witness, and I know I got two witnesses in the house right now that will say when they close his mouth, I opened my mouth. <laughs> There's more people that became uh, aware that, that, that this good news wasn't just to be kept on the inside, but it was to tell some people on the outside. And, and I can only imagine, though, how the disciples must have felt because understand, Jesus walked on water. Wasn't nobody doing that. Jesus was healing the sick and Jesus was raising the dead. Jesus had fed the multitude. He took uh, two fish and, and barley loaves and he fed the multitude of people. And, and he even went ahead and started talking to people and bringing demons out of them. Anybody know anybody like that? Of course not, because that was only Jesus. You see, Jesus did miracles and they wanted to stop the miracles that Jesus was doing. And can't you imagine following Jesus? Can you, can you imagine you being one of the disciples following Jesus and on Friday, all of the power that he had had seemed to be gone. All the things that he had done seemed to be, uh, doesn't matter anymore. But I wish to tell you, the only reason why people couldn't understand him is because they were looking, hallelujah, in the wrong place. Uh huh. They, they, they saw Jesus hung, bleed, and die. They heard the words, it is finished, and they saw him give up the ghost. They took him down and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. They had full understanding that their savior had died. The king, the Messiah that they waited on had died. But here we are in our text. After resting on the Jewish Sabbath day on Saturday, they got up early Sunday morning as our text indicates. Verse 1 says, now Upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Point number one, huh? we have to keep hope alive. Point number one, we have to keep hope alive alive. I want to question you. Have you ever approached a situation and something just didn't feel right? Something just didn't look right? Uh, I can imagine that as they were approaching the tomb, uh, these ladies, they were probably saying to themselves, what in the world are we going to have to deal with now? Because they know that the tomb had been sealed and, and there was a guard on the tomb so that there would be no one to come in and no one for sure to come out. They weren't bothered about anybody coming in, but they were worried about how the powerful Jesus could get out of this bar to see somebody had real understanding about him going to get up on the third day. They, somebody who was who was not really saved had understanding about the power of the Messiah. They Somebody knew that if we don't make precautions and seal this tomb that, that Jesus could slip out through the cracks. Somebody need, need to say amen. Uh, uh, Jesus, big as he was, could slip out through the cracks and they were worried about that. See, with the right kind of hope you can believe. See, they, they kept on walking. Because they said, I don't know what to expect, but I know I have to fulfill my responsibility in, in making sure that Jesus is buried properly. I'm, I'm going to perfume his body. See, see when, you, when you see things happening, such as we are seeing today, you ought to say to yourself, God is up to something. God knows all, sees all, is in all. Everything happens because of him or he allows it to happen when you start seeing things that look a little peculiar, you need to start saying to yourself, God is up to something. God, what you trying to do? God, what you trying to fix? You need to start asking questions. God, what you trying to heal? God, what you try who you trying to deliver? Who you trying to make understand that you are powerful? Who are you trying to get to testify? God, you up to something. I wish I had some people that understand that when God is moving and when God is doing something, he's expecting us to recognize the authority that he is. 
Uh, well, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when God is up to something, discouraged folks need to start cheering up because <laughs> he's up to something. <laughs> Dishonest folks need to go ahead and fess up <laughs> because God is up to something. You, you, you sour, bitter folks, y'all need to sweeten up. Drink some lemonade. Make lemons out of it. Lemonade out of these lemons we getting, huh? Closed folk need to open up. Uh, all you introverts that don't want to open up your mouth and tell somebody God is good even though he's been good to you, open up your mouth and Say something. Conflicted folks need to make up. <laughs> Gossipers need to shut up. Can I repeat that? Uh -huh. Gossipers need to shut up. When God is up to something, we need to be doing. Lukewarm folk need to fire it up. Uh, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Dry bones need to get shook up. Uh, I'm talking about the dry bones in the church, the dead bones in the church. When God is up to something, you need to, can these dry bones live? Can, can these dry bones move? Sure they can if you know that God is up to something. And these pew potatoes need to stand up. But most of all, most of all, because we're all in this together jesus needs to be lifted up he said if i be lifted up from the earth i'll draw all men unto me he he said all you got to do the lifting and and i'll do the drawing <laughs> don't make no mistakes i i don't need you to lift any more than you got to lift but uh i, I make sure that when you do lift in spirit and in truth I'll do the draw. See, it, it takes a little praise to get a whole lot of Jesus. It's a little bit of worship to get a whole lot of fresh anointing. I wish I had somebody to understand this is the time that we are living in. We're living, living in times that he needs to be lifted up so that he can draw people. That's why we're suffering in the manner that we're suffering. That's why he died and he said, I have all power in heaven and in earth. Because there's going to come a time when you're going to need to speak my power all throughout the world. You're going to need to speak my power all throughout the nooks and crannies of the world. And so these women went into this tomb because they had a purpose and they had a plan. And they knew that if they got there, they could find out just what God had been up to. You see, sometimes you got to keep it moving. You got to you got to go in to see what's going on. Just like I said earlier, a young lady and her son came here because they heard something going on on the outside that was coming out of the inside. Y'all missing this point. See, see, even though the windows was closed and there was nobody, somebody was being ministered to it. She was trying to get in. Sometimes you got to persevere. To get it. I think even though she heard just a little bit of the praise team ministering, she got her blessing. She got connected to our website. She got connected to our streaming. She got connected. So now, even though she couldn't come in here, she can come in here. Y'all better give God some praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you can't come in here, you still in here. Somebody said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Because you made a way somehow because some people quite simply are looking in the wrong place and won't find him. They're not looking to find him. But now he's made himself available, our Savior, all over the world. Verse 4 says, And it came to pass, as they were, listen, much perplexed. Wouldn't you be? Come on. I know what I saw. What I, I know what happened on Friday. I saw where you put him on Friday. Yes, much perplexed is a fitting word or terminology to describe how they were feeling. But there about behold, they said two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Why seek you the living among the dead? Verse, or uh, point number two is it's not what it looks like. <laughs> point number two, it's not what it looks like. But can I work with this a little bit? What kind of question is that church for uh, these angels to ask uh, these women? Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? I mean, after what they saw, after what they witnessed, they knew that he was dead. They knew that the tomb was sealed. So why would that question be asked? 
You see, it's, it's really, it's disturbing to understand that even angels would ask a question knowing that he had already risen. But listen, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee went to the tomb early Sunday morning to anoint his body because that was the Jewish custom. But wasn't a part of the custom was the body not being there. Oh, I wish I had somebody can can feel that. I'm fulfilling my custom, but the body moving ain't customary. Good God Almighty. Think about it. Where else would they have gone but to the tomb? They, they, they went there seeking not the living because they saw a corpse go in there. They didn't come there to say hello. They came there to, to do the proper burial ritual for Jesus. And they get asked a question about why seek the living amongst the dead as if the dead somehow got up. Oh, I wish y'all hear me here. There's some dead things in your life. People looking at you funny now because they can only remember how they saw you last. The how they saw Jesus last was as a corpse. Oh, it's some dead bodies walking around right now. Every church in the country, every church in the world has some dead bodies walking around in there, acting like this and acting like that. And, and the only reason why they're continuing to do that is because they people have gotten so used to seeing them in the way that they saw them, and they don't realize that it's important for them. The reason why you're in this place is for you to have a change. Uh, Jesus is presenting to them an opportunity now to change uh, uh, from what they saw to have eyes that can see beyond what they can see. See, in a, in, a, in a sense, this question really wasn't for them. It was for us that would read it soon after. Why are we still looking for dead folks in a living church? Why are we still acting like we don't have any kind of power when Jesus has given all of us the same power that he has, resurrection power? Why do we seek the living amongst the dead? That should be a question we need to ask ourselves why is it that Jesus can tell us a certain thing and we forget the words that he told us listen to what he said he said Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me the only way you can come to me is I got to get up I got to get up so I can make a way for you out of no way he went on to say I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will still live even if he dies, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus was trying to make everybody aware that this thing ain't going to end in the tomb. This thing is not going to end on the cross. The thing ain't going to end because you said crucify him. This thing ain't going to end because you put me in a borrowed tomb. It's going to end what I said. So Jesus said, I came that they may have life and, and have it more abundantly. That being said, why do we look for Jesus? For anything but an abundant life. So you got to see beyond what you see. You got to know that when you don't see it the way that it's supposed to have been presented to you, you need to ask yourself a question. God, are you up to something? Because I don't want to be looking in the wrong place for you. I, I don't want to be looking in the right place. You see, many people are looking in the wrong place for Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to find a body. And I'm glad that I serve not a body, but the spirit. I'm so glad that people are still looking because that makes our testimony even more powerful. If you look for Buddha, he there. <laughs> if you look for Muhammad, <laughs> yeah, he there. If you look for any past presidents <laughs> that's gone on the glory, they, they there. <laughs> But if you look for Jesus, uh, he's not there uh, because he's not dead. He's still alive. The disciples went on to tell in verse six, uh, they say he is not here, but is rem but is risen. And this is the part I like. Uh, remember how he spake unto you uh, when he was yet in Galilee. Uh, see, somebody need to understand something. He's already told us what he's going to do. Uh, and he's already told us where he's going to be. Uh, why are we still looking for Jesus in a bunch of dead places? Uh, there ain't no dead Jesus. And there's nothing that you're going to find that's dead in him, about him, or around him. If you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and strength, you'll praise him in the morning. You'll praise him in the afternoon. You'll praise him in the evening. When you know him to be your savior, you believe he got up. He says, verse 7 says, saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified 
and the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words. I wish somebody got shook right then because he's already told you in the middle of a coronavirus, he will never leave you nor forsake you. In the middle of a pandemic, he said, no, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. You got to remember the word of God. Point number three, we can't forget his words. He said, no, I'll be with you always. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You got to understand he is with us. He is for us. He is forever in us. See, Jesus went from tomb to our hearts. That's why you can't find him. That's why people are looking in the wrong place. They're trying to find him in the tomb. And if you want to really find Jesus, you need to talk to a real Christian. A real Christian will exemplify and show you just who God is and who Jesus is to us. You see, you got to start remembering his words. You got to remember what was written in the Bible. You can't just talk about what's in the Red Book. You just can't talk about what's in People Magazine. You can't just talk about what's going on on CNN. You can't just talk about what's on MSNBC. You got to go to the real word of God. You got to go to the good news. It might put you in a bad situation, but all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. I don't know what your purpose is. I just understand that my purpose is to lift him up. I'll lift him up on this resurrection Sunday because I'm going to remember his word. Even if I can't remember his word, the God Almighty, I remember the songs, stir up the gift in me. I remember the songs. I say, uh, he is faithful. Faithful, faithful is our God. I remember songs that there's something about the man called Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. I remember some songs when I can't remember. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Anybody know what I'm saying? Justice demanded that I should die. But grace and mercy said, no, no, no. I've already paid the price. Anybody glad that when you know what to look for now, you know where to look to. I don't just look to the hills because my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I wish I had some people who understand he is an ever-present help in your times of trouble. He's going to be right where you need him to be. He got up for that purpose. He got up to sit on the right hand to testify for you and for me, to stand in the gap for us, to, stay, to do the things that only he can do. He's in the gap for you. So we can't be the ones that's looking in the wrong place. Don't be that person that's looking for things. If you find Jesus, he'll add some things to your life. We've been looking for hope in the wrong places. We're looking for a check in the mail, and you can need to check the box for Jesus. You're looking for some check to help you get your bills paid. You need to check the box that he says, I'm your provider. You're trying to find out if your healing is going to come through. You need to check the box that says he is Jehovah Rapha. He will heal your body. Do you understand what I'm coming from? He is a shepherd, Jehovah Roha. He will be where you need him to be. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will bring you out of darkness and place you in a marvelous light. That's what he'll do. That's what he's done. That's what he's doing. That's what he's opened up for each and every one of us. The opportunity to tell somebody, you've been looking in the wrong place for your peace. Uh, Jehovah Shalom is what you need. You've been looking in the wrong place to have a good representative for you. Don't worry about the government. Let Jesus represent you. Jehovah Nisi. He'll represent you and make sure that all of your hands are met. Uh, make sure that he knows. You, isn't it something that this census is going on with all this pandemic going on and Jesus was born during the time of a census? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up and be counted. Uh, count it. He's able. I came to let somebody know. He's able to meet you at your point of need. That's why he got up. He said, there's too many people after my death that's going to need more than a body. They're going to need an omnipresent spirit that can meet them wherever they are. Somebody in Japan is saying glory, hallelujah, saying Hosanna. Somebody in Japan saying, thank you, Jesus, for getting up. Hallelujah. Somebody over in Italy is saying, Lord, I thank you for getting up because he's all in the same places at the same time. Somebody in Guatemala is saying, Lord, I thank you this Resurrection Sunday that you got up. 
somebody in Peru and saying, Lord, I thank you because if it had not been for you getting up, I would not have any hope. Somebody's in the Philippines saying, Lord, I thank you because I have a testimony that you did not die, but you are living right now in your uh, in the right hand of Jesus. I wish somebody was somebody down in Tennessee and saying, Lord, I bless you because you've been good all the time and all the time you were good. I thank you for getting up. Somebody is in Mississippi trying to say, Father, I stretch my hand unto thee. No other help I know. Somebody is in Baltimore giving God glory because they knew they couldn't make it without him on that side. Somebody's in New York on their hands and knees begging God for forgiveness and then lifting their hands up to say I will bless you. Somebody's in Chicago saying Lord I bless you at all times. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody, hallelujah is in California saying I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody knew where to look. Somebody knew how to find it. Somebody knows today the right way, the right way to give God praise. He's worthy of your praise. Yes. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. Hallelujah, y'all. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I bless your name, Lord. I bless your name, God. I bless your name. I bless your name. The doors of the church are open unto you. If you're here and you've heard this word, the spirit placed it on me that people have been looking in the wrong place. They're looking for a body, but he's provided a spirit. But he's seeking the people that would worship him in spirit and in truth. So I'm saying to you, you and you, whoever you are, if you give your life to Jesus, be honest. Tell him I'm subject to mess up, but I know what I've been looking for, I haven't been able to find to give me peace. That surpasses understanding. He's available to you right now. All you have to do is confess that he is the son of God. Believe it. That he is who he says he is. That he died on the cross, was crucified. But on this day, he got up with all power in his hands. Don't look for his body anymore. Look for his spirit on the inside of you. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Maybe you've backslidden and haven't been able to do everything that you felt that you could have done the first time. But now you want to try it one more time. The same Jesus that made a way for you before kept waking you up even though you've been doing all this, that, and the other. So he's got his arms open to you now and he's ready to receive you. Receive you just as you are. Repent. Tell him now, I want to turn from my wicked ways. I'm seeking forgiveness that I might be able to walk right. He'll hear you. He'll hear what you're saying. Search your heart and make everything right. Y'all just say it, say it with me. Created me a clean heart and renew within me the right spirit. How about this part? Please don't take away the joy of your salvation. I believe if you've confessed that and you believe that, that the Lord is making a way for you. I honestly believe that with all my heart, my mind and soul. Don't let this day go by without giving him praise and giving him thanks. Thanking him for just another opportunity to be grateful that he got up. He got up with all power in his hands. Tell somebody, stop looking for the Lord in the wrong places. Place him in his heart so he'll always, in your heart so he'll always be there. I'm Pastor R.Q. Moore, Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. On behalf of myself and First Lady and my daughters, we want to say thank you. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you. We pray God will continue to shower down blessings on each and every one of you. God bless. Have a peaceful day.